All right, Artem Lobov is taking on Jason Knight again. Part two, Bare Knuckle Boxing, November 16th, live on pay-per-view. Now joining us is Artem Lobov. Artem, what's going on, man? All good, Chell. Thanks very much for having me on the show. I'm happy to see you. How's preparation going? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, it's finished at this stage. Uh, I just got, you know, to make weight and then uh, put on the show for everyone. All right. Hey, do I insult you if I was to tell you I was surprised that you beat Polly? Not because I question you, but I mean, come on, you you were playing Polly's game and he's a world champion at it. You must have been pretty proud of that performance, right? Um, yeah, I mean, but to be honest with you, I, I knew I was going to do it, you know, because I've been training with some really high level boxers for a very long time now. You know, Ireland is a great place to practice boxing. You know, you have Olympic, you know, medalists here, you have world champions, uh, some very, very high level boxers all around, you know, because Ireland is a small place. Uh, so as a result, I get to spar all of them. You know, I, I, I always knew how to get good. You know, you have to put yourself in those positions and, and, and compete with the best guys out there. And then you reach their level. So, so I knew I had uh, sparred, you know, guys much higher level than Polly was. And, and I was pretty confident going into that fight. So that fight was very fun. I mean, as far as the press conferences and all the heat and drama before it, what were things like with Pauly after the fight? Like when you saw him in the back, was he a good sport? Was he cool or did he still have, did he have hard feelings? No, no, he was cool. You know, once we went I mean, in the back, it was all good. And also, you know, a fight, it's kind of, it's as hot as an argument can ever get, you know? So once you've kind of fought someone, it's hard to kind of hold, you know, a grudge and still be angry. So to me, once we kind of fought, that was it. You know, I, I I didn't really care anymore, you know. And plus, I got the win, got, you know, plenty of money. So, you know, I was feeling pretty good. I like how you said that. A fight is as strong as an argument can get. You make, you make a good point on that. So, Jason Knight, you fought him before. Rematch. How do you see it? Yeah, to be honest, I think um, I'm a lot better prepared this time. You know, the first fight, that was my first ever bare knuckle fight. So. I was sort of going in, you know, there blind, basically, you know, because I didn't really know how to prepare for it. Whereas now, having done two fights, you know, I, I, I'm a lot better prepared, um, and I think I'll be able to put him away. You know, even the last time, I pretty much did put him away. You know, the fight should have been stopped. He, I dropped him three times in one round, so it should be stopped. And even when I dropped him the last time in that round, you can see the referee was affected by the fact that he had heard a 10-second clapper. And that's why he let it go on, because he says to Jason, Jason, put your hands up as into your chin uh, and walk towards me. And Jason, instead of here, he puts the hands up because he's clearly out of it and starts wobbling as he walks. And that, you know, that to me should have been a stoppage. But because he had heard the 10 second clapper, he knew there's only a couple of seconds left. He said, OK, go on, continue and then stop the round as soon as kind of we went to continue. But the fight should have been stopped there, you know, realistically. And that would have been it. So, Artem, tell me this. When you're training for bare knuckle, when you're in the gym actually practicing, what is different in there? By example, do you not wear gloves when you're hitting mitts? Do you hit them just with the bare knuckle to get used to what your power should be like? And then what does sparring look like as well? I mean, do you have some partners in there where you're, you're what we would call an MMA dirty boxing, but is kind of in line with the rules of, uh, of bare knuckle? How is that preparing? Well, I mean, in, in terms of do I hit something with bare knuckles? No, I do not. You know, I mean, to be honest with you, there is a reason why we hit bent on gloves. You know, it's pretty sore, you know, to hit with your bare knuckles and you damage your hands pretty easy. You know, hands are quite fragile. You know, there are a lot of small bones in your hands, so it's very easy to damage them. Uh, and that's why we decided to wear gloves. So now for me to fight bare knuckle, that's fine. But in terms of training, you know, I definitely protect my hands. You know, I, I wear gloves. But, you know, I think my hands are kind of a little bit more conditioned than some of the other people because I never wear wraps, ever. Even when I fought MMA, you know, during my fights, I don't like to wear wraps. When I'm sparring, when I'm uh, hitting mitts, when I'm working, uh, doing bag work, I never, ever wrap my hands. So as a result, my wrists and my kind of hands got hardened over the years, you know, because I hit pretty hard. And, you know, when you do that day to day, hitting the pads and everything with no wraps, your hands just kind of harden up. Um, and as a result, you know, I think they're a bit harder than, than usual. Uh, for example, my fight with Jason, you know, my hands were swollen. They were so sore. I, I, I couldn't hit mitts for like 
most of the camp afterwards. But yet I still did break a single bone, you know, which I was quite surprised with. Hey, uh, let me ask you something totally switching topics, but I've wanted to ask you this. My first time getting to talk to you in a while. If you saw Khabib today, where is your guys' relationship at? Is everything fine? Do you walk over and say hi to him? Do you ignore him? Where, where would things happen if no, Khabib definitely. popped in the room? Yeah, definitely things are not fine. You know, there's uh, some unsettled business there, you know, and I think in due course it all will be settled. But as of now, it's definitely not, not even close. Okay. And is there anything weird? Like, did, did the Russian fans give you a hard time for that? I know you're in Ireland now, but was there any push and pull on that as though you had done something out of line? Uh, no, I mean, it's Khabib's fans, obviously. You know, I have a lot of Russian fans myself, you know, that support me. And obviously, he has a lot of guys that support him. So obviously, you know, his guys that support him, they always have a lot to say about me. But I don't mind, you know, it keeps me my name in the headlines. It keeps my name in the internet searches. And as a result, it keeps my salary nice and high. <laughs> I love it. I got to tell you, you got a great attitude on this. I'm very glad that we got to catch up. I'm going to be watching your fight. Best of luck with Jason Knight. Is there anything else you want to get off your chest? Uh, thank you so much, Shale. And hey, uh, say hi to Ariel for me. I most certainly will. Artem, I promise you I will pass that on. I'll text him right now. Good luck, pal. Uncle Jill, Uncle Jill There's no bad guy like Uncle Jill Never lost, not even around Undefeated, undisputed